Hello, my name is Dave and I am doing this so that I can help other people that uh, experiment with the Thamo Wood, Thamo Wood Glaze Coat High Gloss Epoxy Finish. And um, I did a lot of research on the internet and on YouTube about this kind of project before I took it on so I could make sure I got it right. And um, all the other tips were helpful so I thought I would give my version of it and how it went for me. This is a table that I built and it's dedicated to all things World War II. I cut out these little figures of these guys from um, all different military and all different countries and pilots and stuff along with these infantry badges which turned out dark and I'll explain why I think they turned out dark later. But I also have these maps that I cut out that also have the infantry badges. So all things World War II, pilots, um, tank commanders, Battle of Bulge, um, Russian pilot, and just all these patches. And, and I am a bit of a World War II person, so that's why. And the other motivation was that I do model aircraft, and this is where I'm going to build my models, right here downstairs in my basement. And um, anyway, the Fama Glaze stuff comes in two parts, the hardener and the, the, res, the resin and the hardener, and it's two parts, and this was the gallon version, and it costs about 70 bucks, 69 to $70 at Lowe's or Home Depot, and when I made this table, I left a one quarter border around this, and this white table is medium density fiberboard that I painted white and it was a gloss paint and it, I had no problems with it and when I made this border the blue, it, a quarter inch was sticking up so I wanted to allow that much so that when I poured the glaze that my patches would be able to get covered because they're about one eighth thick yes. so when I got ready to do it I painted this and then I actually use a clear coat to fill in the gaps between to seal it with uh, the clear coat and I caulked it so that it wouldn't leak. So when I got ready to pour I did have a drip cloth but nothing dripped under here. So I was lucky. It, it sealed pretty good. So the directions in this call for being very precise on mixing and you have three containers and you pour A into one B into one and then you have C. A goes into B and you mix it for approximately two minutes and that is so important to not over mix because the air bubbles getting in the resin. And you've got to go nice and steady and kind of scrape along the sides. When you mix it, at first it does appear hazy but then as you get towards the end of the two minutes it starts to turn clear. When you're done mixing A and B together then it goes into another container, which is container C, and then you mix it, once you get it all in there, you make sure you get it all out, and then you mix it for another two minutes, exactly two minutes. You do not want to deviate, don't mix any longer, don't mix any less, it's two minutes and then that's it. And all I can say is that when you put these two together, get down eye level, and look at your two measurements and just make sure they're, that you're mixing it on an even surface. Okay, that's another thing i got to say. When you're pouring this stuff, you got to make sure that your table's even or it's not going to mix right. They recommended doing a resin coat on first to pour a 1 16th coat over the whole thing without anything on there, calling that the seal coat. They recommended doing... 1 16th of the flood coat and I used the entire gallon for this thing and the dimensions of this were 91 inches by 35 and a half so as you can see this is a big area to cover and it turned out to be pretty good and they the, in the family glaze instructions they warn you to not experiment with more than a gallon of it at a time unless you're a professional unless you have a lot of experience the other thing they emphasized over and over again in the instructions is that to beware of um, dust and they recommended putting a dust cover over 
it after you pour it. And um, the thing is, is that when you do pour it on there, you're supposed to use a spreader. And I used about a six inch spreader that was flexible. And I pushed it along, trying to get it all covered. And the, the second coat after the seal coat looked pretty good. I got it all spread out. And then I waited for about seven or eight hours and it hardened. And by the next morning, it was hard. The only thing is, is that since that was the second part of it, some of my patches were sticking up above. So that I knew I was going to have to do a third coat. Like you can see this right here. Like, and it's still sticking out. But I'm going to live with that. And there were some imperfections. Okay. Here's another little tip for you. Um, these older maps and these little... Marine and Navy insignia and these things. This was old paper. So I did have them laminated because I didn't want them to bleed through. I do believe in my heart of hearts that you could get by by um, spraying an acrylic on there or a clear coat of enamel and I think that it would suffice and it wouldn't allow it to bleed. The patches, unfortunately, a lot of my World War II patches and these squadron patches, they turned out really dark. And the mistake I believe that I made is that I didn't consider um, spraying these with some kind of acrylic or having a sheath over them to make them where they wouldn't um, be saturated by the epoxy. Some of them turned out, but as you can see, these ones are dark and you really can't tell what they are. And that's a shame because they were really cool patches. And I bought them at an antique shop. And, but I still am satisfied. It, it still looks pretty cool. And then there's a lot of these patches that are on these, these older maps, like these insignias and stuff. And, uh, but I did have those older maps laminated. These stars I just put in for show, red and white. And there was no specific pattern. I kind of had all these airplanes and tanks and jets, just everything dedicated to World War II. So... The other thing is, is temperature. It says that it needs to be 70, and the warmer it is, the faster it's supposed to, um, to cure. And that's Jack, everybody. <laughs> A little turd. So, yeah. Um, I put, I'm down in my basement, and it's pretty warm in here, but I brought down a radiator heater to make it warmer, just to enhance the heating pr process part of it. And, um... The thing, one other little tip that I'll give you too is that when you do the seal coat, and I had that initial coat and this whole board was just white, these little paper things like this, I was able to just stick them on. No problem. They were going to adhere and be there forever and not move. The lady that I talked to on the phone from Famoclays, I called, she told me to glue these patches, but I just, I didn't feel like I needed to because they were sticky and they were sticking right in. But when I did pour that flood coat down, they did kind of come up a little. But the seal coat was only four or five hours of, in its um, curing, and, and it was still kind of gooey and sticky, so you could move them around, but you could stick them in. But everything else... I didn't need to glue, I could just stick right on. And, and it recommends that when you do the seal coat, 1 16th of the flood coat, and you can put the stuff on, and then, and then you can go ahead and pour that flood coat on there. And that's what I did. And so I did that, let it set, and then I came in in the morning, hard as a rock, pretty clear. <laughs> she did that this morning. And then... Um, and then I poured another coat, which was the, the last and final coat. So I got $140 tied up in the, in the spangle glaze because it's like 70 and it comes in these two little containers. Um, but anyway, that's, this is my World War II table. Go ahead and get another shot, all close up. Um, I really thought it was cool. And like I said, I do military World War II aircraft and models. And this is where I'm going to do my models down here. It's kind of a, a sanctuary, <laughs> as you can see. And um, if you have any questions or need some tips or want to weigh in, um, I will point out some of the other imperfections that happened. Oh, just remember another thing. If you have air bubbles, it says in the instructions you can use a blow dryer or a, or a torch 
for bigger areas or to, to get them out and they come right out. I didn't have a lot of air bubbles, but it makes dimples, but it's pretty easy to get them out. But right here you can see where there was a little bit of an imperfection where I kind of was messing around with the air gun and I did that and it caused it to be uneven. And, you know, if I wanted to go all out, I could pour another coat and it probably would be completely done, but I, I just, I'm satisfied with the way it's going to be, and it turned out pretty good, you know, I'm going to make her bark again, but anyway, um, if you have any tips, and you want to give me some tips for the next time I do something, I'd appreciate it, and I'd love to hear your comments and remarks, and um, if you're going to take on a project like this, read the instructions, don't deviate, make sure your levels are clear when you're Mixing, that's so important. I really do feel like that when people don't turn it out, it won't cure right. If you're not one-to-one -one ratio with these two mixes here, you're going to be in trouble and it won't cure right. And the next morning, you'll wait three days and it'll still have a sticky gooey to it. But anyway, I'm Dave. My handle is Travels with Dave. I'm on YouTube. I don't have very many instructional videos, but this is kind of the beginning of it. And... Let me know if you have any questions. I'm out. Thank you. That was about 10 minutes worth. <laughs>